Good afternoon. Welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. This afternoon I'm doing something a little bit different for me. I'm tying a cicada as a carp pattern. I was recently up on the Bighorn River in Montana and some of these hot September days the nymph fishing isn't very good in the afternoon so I take a drift boat up to the after bay and throw dry flies for carp. It's a blast. The hook I'm using is a TMCO 2499 SPBLB. It's barbless, very short, sharp. You can see that spade point down there. And a good strong wire. <clears throat> I'm using 140 denier UTC thread. You want something you can pull on because we're going to crush some foam here. Now this is a size 8 hook. This is quite a bit oversized for the size of fly I'm going to tie on it, but I want it to get around the the carp's lips and I like the barbless part so when I let them go you can just kind of reach in the net and pop it out and not have to worry too much about those smelly things unless of course you want to pick them out of the net and give them a kiss now the body is Senyo's fusion dubbing the color is flame, you want something orange if I was going to tie this pattern for trout, when we got some cicadas on the Thompson, I would definitely use a smaller size hook for this. Now this is mostly for the color. I'm not worrying too much about building up bulk or any taper. Don't worry if it gets shaggy. Don't worry if it gets lumpy. Now I saved some space up at the front because we've got uh, some fold foam folds to go up there body is 3 millimeter craft foam. It's been cut with a tapered Chernobyl cutter from River Roads Creations, a small size. And I'm just going to set that up so that it extends a little bit, a little bit beyond the bend. Make sure your thread is pretty flat. Crush that foam as you tighten your thread. And if you get it right over the foam, or excuse me, over the dubbing, it will help help it stay in place. Now I'm going to move the thread up almost to the eye of the hook and tie it in here as well. Now that that's in place, I can come back and just kind of flatten out that little bubble. Now it's nice and secure. For our wing material, I'm going to use some Montana Fly Widow's Web in white. You could use Polar Bear or just about any color. And I'm going to double this over, so I want to pick out the about half the volume that I want my wing. Since this is a pretty big hook, I'm going to use a little extra Widow's Web. And make sure this thing floats. Although on still water it doesn't take much. This does a good job. Now I'm going to measure this so that it extends just a little bit beyond the foam body. And then tie it in at the front to that little collar we made. Move my thread back a couple of turns. So now when I fold the yarn back it will be easy to jump up on top of it without your thread sliding off. Now we're going to fill that in with orange dubbing. I guess let's trim the wing first, just a little bit longer than the body. This pattern in some other colors I think is called a flop hopper. You can look that up and see the tying technique. It's something you could mix and match colors and do an awful lot with. It just I discovered it about the right time to tie these cicadas. I think uh, Don showed me one of these before we went up to Montana. Now as I come back I can jump up a little bit onto the wing to make it nice and seamless underneath. Now I'm going to fold the foam back. You see that extra dubbing in there? That's all right with me. I'm going to dub a little more later anyway. So get that one tightened down. 
ready for the legs. We've got some grizzly flutter legs, orange with black barring on them. And these legs are pretty short. I'm going to use two turns. There you go, pretty short. And when I get ready to tie in the far legs, I'll take one of those turns off and use it for the far leg. So now I've got a total of three wraps. What I'm doing is trying to not build up too big of a black band underneath. Just a good technique. Okay, now if I'd used orange thread, I'd be almost done, but I'm going to use a little bit of dubbing to color, cover up the black thread on the last couple of the little wraps here. Just a tiny amount, very thin, go in between, and then I got just about enough to cover the black stripe on the bottom as I jump up to the eye of the hook. Now I'm ready for a whip finish. And let's pretend I used head cement. Pick up the scissors one time and cut the thread. Come in and cut the foam relatively flush. And there you go. A little flop cicada. Have fun.